What's up, everyone? I'm here just to give you a little complimentary video going through the notes. Um, with regards to the notes, I think it's short, but definitely some important content we're going to go through. So um, interest groups are just an example of linked institutions. We know them. You've heard of them. You just maybe haven't categorized them as this. So by the end of next week, we're going to revisit this. But just like political parties link us to politics, interest groups do as well. Last week, you took some notes, interest groups, what makes them distinct? They're not trying to get candidates into office. Now, they may support certain political parties historically, but they're not actually putting someone on a ballot. So that's the one thing to remember. And furthermore, the actions interest groups take, way more diverse, way more a variety. Interest groups can be seen in, in whole different walks of life. Um, I think this video, it's a crash course, which I'm sure a lot of you have experience with. So it's quick, it's fast, a lot of rapid info, but it could be a good supplemental opportunity for you to watch just to get more real world examples. You never have to memorize what interest groups are, like examples of them, but you do have to understand, I guess, um, how they play a role. So that's why I gave you some slides over the next uh, kind of chunk of the, the lecture. It's just trying to give you some examples because interest groups are prevalent. They're growing and growing. There are literally thousands and thousands of them. And in terms of influence, they are spending millions and millions on elections. So while a political party could be distant and some of us will probably never ever go to a political party convention, even, even at a state level, interest groups are the way more common way you engage in, political, in the political process. Corporations, can count as interest groups because they make a lot of money. Labor unions can count as interest groups. They're representing the needs of the people. Think tanks can represent interest groups because they're kind of conducting a lot of scientific studies. Um, the science and political science per se, they're the ones doing a lot of surveys, trying to understand what people believe. The Cato Institute is one for a lot of libertarians. They point to their studies. And then you have probably the ones that we know the best because they're the most... Um, they're the most blatant in terms of what they want. They're single issue groups. So the NRA, if you ever see a sticker on a car, or maybe one of your family members is in, in the NRA, they're a huge national organization. Mothers Against Drunk Driving, they were formed in the 80s because na nationally, a lot of people realize too many young people were dying because of drunk driving. So these are groups that are focused on one specific agenda. In foreign policy, you could pick your area of the world. I just chose the Middle East and Israel because it's since World War II, it's been a topic that we see a lot of interest groups trying to influence political uh, policy. Um, locally, the VTA, uh, our teachers union, probably maybe you've heard of or maybe you know that teachers are a part of this union. They represent, again, just another example of groups organizing to try to influence politics. But as I said, you don't need to memorize the who in terms of different examples. It's more exa more important to understand what they do. So that's what the rest of the lecture slide goes to do. Influence, influencing public opinion, trying to persuade us. Like this was an ad I found. It was created by an interest group trying to convince more and more Americans and more and more politicians probably to create policies that support California avocado farmers. Now, in terms of influencing public opinion, there's a lot of steps they could take, a lot of measures they could take. Again, don't necessarily need to memorize them. Just know interest groups are constantly trying to influence us and persuade our views. The next example is how they try to influence court rulings. They file something called an amicus curiae brief. It's a way that you as an interest group or an outside group can try to support a side in a, in a, in a federal court case. I want you to take a moment and think, why should the judicial branch be free of outside influence? Because we know they should. So press pause or refer to your notes from FRED 78. As you go through the rest of the video, um, you'll, you'll get more definitions, you'll get more examples. Um, these are all examples of outside groups that file amicus curiae briefs. And then the last most important thing you need to end on is noting the role of PACs money and the rules they have where the money goes and then on our canvas you'll find one last activity that ties in money and politics 
and kind of highlights why we need to regulate it or 